Guys, what an interview. You have to watch my interview here with Crystal Archie and Mike Archie. Now, for those of you who don't know who they are, Mike Archie went to NFL. He's a personal friend of mine. Matter of fact, when I came to the United States at 11 years old, he was one of the first people I met in high school. He was a high school jock. He has a crazy story of how he made it to NFL. And then after a few years, he had an injury. They let him go. He went from making money to literally living with no money. You know, they were going through some hard time. Crystal was talking about how she was going to grocery store and her credit cards didn't work. And, and it was just a bunch of ups and downs in life. But now they are in a beautiful place in their life. And their story will definitely, definitely motivate you and inspire you. So make sure you listen, make sure you like, comment, share with everybody. And again, I hope you take something great away from this interview. Hey guys, welcome to the One Percenter Podcast. Oh my God, it's crazy. <laughs> I feel like I'm in a twilight zone. I got one of my best friends from high school, which I haven't seen in 30 years, you know, in the house with his beautiful, beautiful wife, Thank Crystal you. Archie. Crystal and Mike Archie, let's welcome them. Thank you so much Thank to be you. on the podcast. Thank you. Thank you, Brother, Thank you so you. much. Thank Bro, you. it's crazy, man. We're just talking off camera. Yeah. Who would have thought? You know, you saw me when I first came to the United States. Mm. I didn't even speak English. You know what I mean? I came with my little briefcase and the, you know, <laughs> low, 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 low high socks on and, and came to Sharon, Pennsylvania, man. And, and you know, everybody looked at me and was like, who the hell is this guy? He's not black, he's white. And you took me under your wing and you were like, come on, man, I got you, man. You know what I mean? You. You're my little bodyguard. You know, you looked over me, man. And, and it's crazy. You know, but in high school, like, you were the, you were the jock. You were the, you were the, the, the you know, base, the, the top baseball player top football player, top basketball player. You were the popular guy, man. You were the, everybody wanted to be Mike, like Mike. Yeah. No, everybody literally wanted to be like Mike. Be like Mike. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I know recently, man, you got you know, inducted in Mercer County, which is where we were from, we're the Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame yeah. you know, and it, like I said, this morning I texted my cousin. I go, Mike is coming. He goes, Mike, that's the best player I ever came out of Sharon. <laughs> you know? But what's very really fascinating is you guys' story, yeah. you know, because you guys, you know, got together very young, mm -hmm. had a child, yep. you know, you went pro, so you went from, from low, because where we come from, you know, yep. it's, you know it's, it's, it's a middle, lower, you know, class, class you know, yeah. area, mm -hmm. you know, where, you know, you, when you make, you know, $30,000 $30, a year, you're balling. Right, if right, that, if, right. That, if, if that. that, if that, right? <laughs> you know, I always tell people that, like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm exaggerating, actually, yeah. you, you make $1,500 a month, you're balling, right. you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so we raised up from there, you know, so we had such a like low standards, yeah. right, if you will, you know, uh, because, you know, we didn't see that around us. Right. You know, you got, you got away, you know, you, and, you know, you met your beautiful, beautiful yeah. wife when you were at Penn State. Yeah. And I, I know I the whole story. 18. I'll let you guys talk more yeah. about yeah, it. Yeah. But, I, you know, the crazy, what I want to talk about is this, because you guys were down. Yep. You guys went up. Mm -hmm. And then you got down again. <laughs> yep. And then now you're back up back again, up again. And, and, and you guys persisted. You guys didn't say, you know what, man, I'm down, I'm out. Right. You know, I always say when people, um, you know, when we're, as kids, when we learn how to walk, like we, we fall a thousand times before we master. Not one time did we say, you know what, walking ain't for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But you guys kept getting back up. Let's talk about that. I want to first, you know, pre-frame everything. Yeah. I'm going to shut up. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. let you all talk about it because I love you guys' story. Gosh, where do we start? Oh my goodness. Where do we start? Oh. Okay, try and, we'll try to make a really long story short, and when I get going, I tend to talk fast, so slow me down. So it may not be need, that short. Yeah, <laughs> <It's> <laughs> all good. I talk a million miles a minute. So, <laughs> met him, I was 18 years old, I was working um, as a waitress. My family couldn't afford for me to go to college. And you're from a small town too, I'm right? I'm from a very yep. small town too. We were, did not know, we grew up two hours away from each other our yep. whole lives, did not know it. And graduate high school, I grew up similar situation, you know, just, just tell it like it is. I mean, just yeah. that poor mindset, no one in our family. I don't think anybody ever went to college in my family. Yeah, no. I think there might've been one or two people who even graduated high school. So the fact that I even graduated high school, that was a big deal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it was, it was just, I love my family, but it, we struggled. I mean, you know, I grew up on welfare mm -hmm. and and it was always taught to me because I always had big dreams. Mm. I always had these aspirations and I always felt like 
there's got to be more and I want more. I don't want... When, when, when did you have big dreams? When did that start? Is it was something that was always in you? I think it was. Me you too. know, because when yeah, I was too. growing exactly. up... Was say, me too. Yeah. It was always yeah. in me because when I was growing up, my family would say, oh, Crystal Lee, my middle name's Lee. Oh, Crystal Lee, you know, you think you're better than us and you're trying to be hanging around with this popular crowd and you're a cheerleader and you're this and you're that and, and you're, you know, this is reality, this is the way things are, you know, your, your head's in the clouds, you're dreaming too big, you know. Yeah. My mom was amazing. My mom always encouraged me to dream. But it's like everybody else around me, they just thought that I was just... Yeah, out you know, there. I was out, out there, there yeah. you know. But I always, you were a dreamer. I was a dreamer. And I always just said, this is, this is not going to be my life. Yeah. I refuse to repeat the cycle of poverty yeah. and this cycle of this horrible just mindset of this is the way life is, accept yeah. it. Yeah. I'm like, no. So... My family couldn't afford me to go to college, so I left when I was 18. I got three jobs. Three and jobs? Three That's jobs. crazy. You I was working three jobs as an 18-year-old. So what, like, what were you doing? Uh, cocktail waitressing. Uh, I was a hostess and a, a waitress. So I would go from job to job to job, morning till night, and I had an apartment, and I shared it with two other women, and I would walk by myself at 18 years old in the dark at 2 a.m. all the way back to my apartment, didn't have a car. Where did you learn that hustle, though? You know, you know, you know, is, is, is having one job is cool. Yeah. Like, okay, you know, but now not two jobs, but three jobs. Yeah. What, how did you say, you know what, I'm just gonna work my ass out. What were you, what were you thinking? Because three jobs is ridiculous, yeah. especially for an 18-year-old <laughs> right. with an 18-year-old mentality. Right. Right. I mean, here I am, like I said, no college degree, but my parents could not afford, even though they wanted to, they couldn't help me. They, they couldn't pay their own bills. Yeah. So they couldn't pay for, help me to pay for my apartment, to pay for my food, to pay for this and that. So I had to put my big girl panties on yeah. and I had, to, I had to do something if I want to change. <laughs> I had to do something. So I just did whatever. I mean, I just dove in and worked myself and worked myself. But one night in one of the places that I was working at, here comes Mike Archie, and I knew exactly who he was. Everybody know who you it know, is. I knew exactly Star who he was. Star football player. And I, I feel bad, all my football player friends out there, but I did not like football players. And I just didn't like all their cocky, all cocky, and their cocky arrogant. arrogant attitude. And, and I met some of his other friends, his teammates, and they just kind of... say they didn't help me. No, they, they didn't help, help the situation. So he came in, did the whole, I love your eyes, you know, and I blew him off and pretty much gave him, you know, the hand. He's like, how are you going to... How are you going to do me? me like Mike that. ain't used to that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How are you going to treat me? Oh, you don't even know No, me. I know. I said, um, you said my name is Mike Archie. And I was like, I know exactly, I know exactly who you are. are. <laughs> I know exactly I'm Mike Archie. <laughs> 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 stop right there. Just stop. So anyway, so I was so rude to him that night. He told, go ahead. I'll let you explain. So. Right after I met her, I, um, one of my buddies were up. Bill Jackson was up. Bill, oh, you you Bill? Know, I know yeah. Bill. I know, I know Bill. 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 Yeah, Bill. Bill. Yeah. Billy. Yeah. Billy. We <laughs> uh, Bill was up, and my roommate was with him too at the same time. And we went down after I got done talking. Even though she blew me off, I went back to my boys. And I said, "I'm gonna marry that girl." And and their you knew you knew it right there and then. You knew it right there and then. Knew it right then and there. Cause and then. cause where we come from. We don't believe in marriage unless yeah. it's like right. unless it's the one. Yeah. Right, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Where we come from, you don't, people don't get married. No, we got baby mama, baby right. daddy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, marriage no is a real example. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. For real. You know what I mean? So no. when he said marry, you were for real. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. And so yeah, and after I said that, um, we left. And about four days later, I just said, I gotta go back down there. I don't care how she treated me, I gotta go see her again. So I went back down, I walk in, and what'd you do? I felt really bad because I treated him horribly. The As first you time. should. You know, and I, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I don't want him to think I'm a total biatch. So I go over to him and I was like, I am so sorry how I treated you. I said, you know, I just don't like football players. And when you work as a cocktail waitress, you just deal with guys. And I apologized to him, and he's like, "Okay." And he he didn't do this. You're exaggerating a little bit. That. If I you would have done that, I really would have liked you. <laughs> but he pretty much said, "Okay,", okay. and walked away, and, walked and away. just smiled and walked away. And I was like, "No, he didn't. No, he didn't." Just anyway. Long story short, we just yo, you got to play a little hard to get. You know what I mean? Know, yeah. well, you know, <laughs> that's why I say got to play that. Cat he got, she got guys. You know. <laughs> I did the same thing with my wife. You know what I mean? <laughs> if she got guys coming at her all day long, you don't want to be that one guy again coming at her. You right. got to play a little different. <laughs> so all night we played a little cat and mouse game, ended up exchanging phone numbers, said we were going to hang out as friends. Yep. And after that first date, we were inseparable. That's all she wrote. And three months later, 
We kept pregnant, pregnant with our first child. I was 18. Everybody thought we were crazy. Everybody thought and, we were and, crazy. And, and, and it was intentional. And it was intentional. It, you know what I mean? Yeah, it was intentional. You know, you know that's, that's the our one thing. Our kids still to this and, day don't believe and, it. Yeah, and, and this, the, the crazy thing is, you know, that's, that's what I was like. It's intentional. Yeah. You guys knew that you guys were going to yeah. be there. Yeah. You, know, you know, obviously the future was unknown. Right. right. You know what I mean? And, and you guys said, look, you know, we, we believe in each other yeah. no matter what. I yeah. want to make this a real thing. Right. We want to have a child right. together. Right. That's crazy, so, but right. awesome. Right. You know? So we, everybody thought we were nuts and it would never work and that we would not last. And um, here, we, we are. here we are, but, 25 years but you said, you said, because we didn't have the money to get married at the right. time. Um, I was working as waitress before I got pregnant, and he's a college athlete. He can't. Get yeah, well, a job. You, well, you got money to get married at a city hall, but he wanted to give you a good way. <laughs> right, right. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Like right. you only got twenty five dollars to get me. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, but, you, but, but, but I know Mike, man. Mike, you know Mike was like, you know what, Paul? Like, yeah, I, I want to give you the right, right wedding. Right. right. I want to so do, do it right. right. Yeah. yeah. I want to honor her and right. give her the, the wedding of her dreams, so she wanted. Mm -hmm. um, because I mean, like you, like she said, she worked three jobs. Yeah. And I said to myself, I'm a student athlete. I have. I don't. I wasn't making money yet. I wanted, no. I, she made more money than I did. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, but I felt, you know, I was a little discouraged at the time, a little bit, but I knew our circumstance was going to be different because when I got pregnant, I mean, I had to get back on welfare. To, yeah. You know, I'm pregnant yep. and I couldn't pay for a medical. I, I, love, how you, I love how you keep it real. Yeah, you know I, I mean, get you know, because a lot of people are trying to fake stuff and yeah. all that kind of stuff. And you know what? To me, your story, you know, your, how, you know, how, where you are, you know, is, has nothing a reflection of where you've been before. Yeah. Right. You know, and I love how you keep it real because most people come here, oh, no, I didn't ever do that. You know, just let, let me tell you a little bit about my background really quick. Yeah, go ahead. I don't want to, you know, my mom would never admit that she was on welfare. Mm -hmm. You know, we were on welfare. Mom, because to me, she was too proud to, I'm like, mom, you know, that's the good thing. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing when, you know, we, right. we, you know, we, you know, we were there and now we're here. Yeah. So, you know, you know, but in our culture, man, you know, they, they never admit, they always talk about their wins, but not never their losses. Right. And you know, you don't, you don't learn nothing from the win. You right. learn, you learn from the losses. Oh, right. Anyway, sorry. Well, I got to tell you no, something funny really quick. We're really quick. Something funny. So when we started dating and my mom, we would go, but this is before I got pregnant. Yeah, yes. this is before I got pregnant. Went back to visit my, my mom and dad. My mom's passed now, but um, she sent me back then. I don't think they have this anymore in the welfare system. But back then they had well, the food then stamps. Back then you had the food stamps. The food stamps. Right. And she said, I need I you to I know about food stamps. Yeah. Yeah. She's like, I need you to go to the store. You know, I'm not embarrassed now to talk about my past, but back then I would say I was embarrassed when I was growing up and everything. Um, but she's like, here, I need you to take these food stamps and go to the store to get some milk, blah, 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 blah. And I go, I'm not taking that. I'm not taking that funny money. I'm not taking that and funny money. And Michael's like, well, where I'm and from. And I looked at her <laughs> and I said, I grabbed that food stamps out of her. I said, where I'm from, this is how I ate. I'm yeah. going, yeah. 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 I'm going too, to the but, store and get it. But where I was more embarrassed about it, yeah. you weren't. You I were like, not. give me my funny money, give me my give food me stamps. I'm going to get me some milk and bread and spam and bologna. Hey. Hey, can I, can I tell you a funny story about food stamps? <laughs> so when I came to America, my uncle had that store in Idaho Street, you know, with the mm -hmm. worst peer, you know. Yeah. I didn't know what food stamp was. I thought it was money's money. I'm a foreigner. <laughs> so my uncle put me in charge of the candy and the cigarette section. Mm -hmm. So I'm in the candy and cigarette section. People from the hood would come in, right? And they give me, they give me food stamps. So I'd give me a cigarette and I would give them a cigarette. You know, and next thing you know, the hood find out that this little guy don't know nothing about how to work with food stamps. And I was giving them, I was giving him cigarettes, I was giving him stuff that I was, you know, one time, one time. food stamps couldn't buy. Yeah, they couldn't buy. So, so one time, one time my uncle came in, he, he started getting curious after a couple of days. He goes, damn, why are your section so busy all the time now? You know, all of a sudden, like, you're here, what are you doing different? You know what I mean? They said, no, see, you can't get people, you know, you know what I mean? And, and, and then one trick I found out was people would come get penny candy. You know, so, so let's just say a cigarette was dollar fifty. So they would come in and buy like five cents worth of penny candy. I give them ninety five cents back. They come in another time, get five cents penny candy, ninety five. Then bring the change and buy the cigarette. <laughs> 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 I learned the hood tricks real quick. Real quick. quick. <laughs> real real quick. quick. Oh my gosh, so hilarious. yeah, that oh is hilarious. Goodness. All right, so where'd we leave off? So he uh, playing football at Penn State oh. and busting his. Booty playing, trying to make it to the league. There was no guarantee, you yeah. know. He could have had an injury. He yeah. could have. Yeah. Anything There was happen. no guarantee. Yeah. So he made sure he got his college education, got his degree, and um, got got uh, drafted. I remember we were in Sharon, Pennsylvania, during the draft, of, uh, yeah. the NFL draft, and what a nerve-wracking day that was. And got drafted in the seventh round. And so anyway, so here we are, both, you know, how we grew up. He's in the NFL. 
you know, we're like, wow, all of our dreams. No, we made it. You know, we, we made, made it. it. Like, was, all of our all dreams are going to come true, you know? You know, starting to pay off and yeah. it's starting to show. But you were, we're thinking that this is going to last for Ever. the rest of our life. Yeah. Because I remember when he was in training camp, we were every year just worried sick. And I'd be at home with Jasmine, and then we had the other kids every year. He's busting his tail to make the team, you know, giving it all he got. Because, because they have how many guys they start out with? Start out with 84 guys on the, on the roster. Before and camp. in four weeks, it go, it gets cut down to 53. Mm. Yeah. Wow. So, so every camp. And, and, and these are, eight, yes. you know, 84 eligible. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? All you know what I mean? mean you know, they, they, they ain't just regular. You know, they, they, they got, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? They they, they, they the man in, in, in their own perspective in town. You know what I exactly. mean? <laughs> every one of those players are all American. Yes. So he's having to go up against top dogs every single day. But he ended up playing, and we thought our dreams were going to come true, and he's doing well. Your first uh, NFL, uh, wasn't your first NFL um, catch or carry? It was a touchdown. My first carry, carry in the game was, was a touchdown nice. against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Nice. It was my Buccaneers. first official carry in the NFL, and it went for a touchdown, the game-winning touchdown, nice. actually. Nice. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, had that ball framed. Um, I don't I don't have that ball now because we bought Our a dog. Our dog chewed it up. <laughs> yeah. I was so mad. Oh, we oh, came up anyway. that day, and that ball was gone. <laughs> <laughs> but my first carry was uh, um, – for a touchdown, and so I mean that that was awesome, mm -hmm. you know, a feeling. Mm -hmm. Not the, not many people get their first carry. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. The first time they touch yeah. the ball. No, that's crazy. In a game, it goes for a touchdown. That's I didn't know that. <laughs> that's pretty, that's that's pretty cool. Yeah. Really quick before before we go. So, how was your your parents mm -hmm. with you guys getting together as an interracial couple? Oh yeah, we we'll go there. So. Our parents. Because I know, good. I know, our town, yeah. our town was very prejudiced. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we come, we, you know, we when we grew up, man. You know, you know, you know, you know, white people were prejudiced right. and black people oh, were prejudiced. Right. You know what right. I mean? Right. You know what I mean? Both, yeah, 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 both sides. So our his mom's always been great. My mom and dad, they were great. They, my mom and dad, love him. I think more than they love me. Like they said, he was a son that they never had. But other people outside. Like the, the relatives the and all that. The older, the older school, the, the old older school, school generation. Um, my town, I heard that I was the N-word lover, that that's what I was being called, you know. My great-grandmother on my mom's side. So when my daughter was, our daughter was born, she made five generations. She was the fifth generation. Yeah. So my mom wanted to get a picture taken and put in the newspaper and did the whole thing. And my great-grandmother said, I would never get my picture taken with the baby the n-word baby yeah. yeah so talk about hurtful like mm -hmm. this is her great 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 grandchild oh, yeah. and to say that that hurt you know yeah. and he had some old school grandparent you yeah. know, situation too but yeah. we just um, laughed it off you know yeah. we're just yeah. like we just totally laughed it off people for me you know it was always i i know i know who i'm falling in love with yeah I absolutely yeah. I love. Yeah. Yeah. it has nothing i didn't see skin color no. So, no, absolutely. It, you know, yeah. so, it's it's just your surroundings where we were. I mean, yeah. I mean, look, right. you know, my mom is the sweetest lady in the world, right? You know, but we're, we're Persians. You know, Persians are supposed to marry Persians. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I knew it doesn't matter color, race. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was supposed to marry a Persian. Right. You know what I mean? So when I married outside of my race, man, she wasn't, she wasn't real happy. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, you know, I, you know it, it's, it's their ignorance because they're not they're exposed ignorance. to it. Right. Back, back then, world was separated. Now, world is flat. Right. Everybody looks at everybody differently and everybody's just one color. Yep. You know? Yep. All yep. right. So, so NFL, he gets drafted. He gets drafted. So years are gone by. Every year he's making the team. Thank God. And then that fourth year, it was the same year the Titans went to the Super Bowl. Super Bowl, yep. Same year. And he had a high ankle sprain. High ankle sprain. And before I knew it, I was being called into the office and he said that because... And it wasn't because of his... Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Yeah, no, so don't want ahead. to leave it out. And it wasn't because of his ability. In the NFL, it's all about numbers and money. Yeah, that's it. Salary yeah, caps. Yeah. Salary caps, maneuvering money around. Um, I was told that we, we love you. you it's, it has nothing to do with your talent. Um, it's just because you're injured right now. Um, we feel like there's a younger yeah, guy. We can get a newer model. We can get a newer yeah, model yeah, yeah. for cheaper. Yeah, for yeah. Cheaper. So yeah. we have to let you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, wow. Yeah. yeah. It's, you uh, know what I mean? That's, it's, it's, it's a business. It's a business. It's a business. business. You know what I mean? 
So he had to come home and tell me this. And Mike, how'd you feel, man? Like, like I, I, I want to know your feelings. Like, you know, um, you know, you, you know, you busted your life. You busted your whole oh, life I, ever since you were a little kid. I remember five? you. You know, yeah. I remember you ever since you were a little kid. You busted your ass, and you know, you, yeah. you, you know, you know, in school, you know, football, was, you know, sports was your identity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was your identity, yeah. right? You know, and then now you go and and pretty much they threw out your identity right right and how did you feel oh no it was tough remember we used to talk about that <sighs> and all i used to tell him like you know who am i now you know yeah, yeah. um but it, it just it just took something inside of me it was like you know like you said that was my whole identity growing up i was always known as mike archie the football player yeah. um, mike archie the baller and now that's over with there. Yeah. and so now you had to get to a different mindset yeah a mind frame of who are you now? Yeah. But I, I knew that I had a loving wife. We I had knew, two kids at the time. We had two kids at the time. Mm -hmm. I knew I had to be a father. Yeah. And I knew I had to do stick, something. Yeah. I had to step up and do something and provide. I didn't have time to sit back and sulk or get into depression. Yeah. To, you, you, and it happens a lot. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you know, that identity is gone. So I mean, no, no. I mean, you know, you know, I always say action alleviates you know anxiety mm -hmm. you know what i mean you know you know with my, well, like, like i said my wife is doing this 20 pound challenge right now right and her weigh-in is in 10 days and i said the worst thing you can do is be home yeah right <laughs> you know what i mean and, right. and think about this right. you know what I mean? right just go out there go do out. go out yeah. there do mm -hmm. something you know what i mean mm -hmm. keep your mind off of it and obviously it has i mean is this is at a whole new level but I love how you're positive. I, I love you know you know you know. I have two choices. I can't sit at home and, and feel sorry for myself. I got right. kids. I got a family to do. Mm -hmm. I got to go do something. Right. right. And what was that? And uh, so I was always trying to get back into the league. So I wanted to stay working out, training, yeah. but I also knew I had to make provide. money. Yeah. I had to provide because that income just came to a screeching halt. Yep. <laughs> and so and you can only survive off of the savings for so long. So long. <laughs> and so I, I did. I tried to go out and put my degree to work, um, tried to put a resume out there. Even though I had no experience, and I was told when I did interviews, you don't have any experience, so we can't hire you. Well, duh, I've been playing football yeah. my whole yeah. life, and I need this opportunity to get experience. Well, we can't hire you. So that's crazy, man, because here's what I look at. You know, I've had a former NFL player work for me. You know, and I hired those athletes because of the discipline. Right. Mm -hmm. I know if I tell him to get be there at four o'clock, he'll be there. He don't need it, but I know that discipline is there because the same discipline he applied in sports, yep. he can just you know you know take right. it over right. there. Right. So for me, like you know, I look for those people, and mm -hmm. it's sad that people didn't see that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so well, they would sit and talk to you, and they want to talk football. And oh yeah, we would have great conversation. <laughs> tell me what what Coach Paterno was like in college. Tell me what Jeff Fisher was like. Who was the head coach at that time? Mm -hmm. Oh man, it's so great that you played for the Titans, and I bet you that was an awesome experience. I'm like, yep. But at the end of the conversation, we can't give you a job. We can't give you a job. <laughs> <laughs> so I would just turn around and walk out, and you know, and I wouldn't let it get me down. Um, and I, mean, I have to say, intervene here, and I mean to cut you off again, babe. But um, we do have to share. You know, thank God we had our faith because that's because a lot of guys, you know, we're Christians, mm -hmm. and we just really gave our life to the Lord right before you got hurt. Right and before I got hurt, team. yep. And a lot of athletes, when they lose that and they don't have their sense of identity, they feel like everything is gone, who am I now? Yeah. So thank God we had our faith to get us through that time because yep. we knew we were bigger. He knew he was bigger yeah. than football. He knew that he yep. had so many gifts and talents and there was more out there. You know, Mike always knows knew that life happens for you, not yep. against you, right. yep. you know what I mean? And um, you know, when you connect thoughts backwards, mm -hmm. you'll be like, man, thank God that happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? absolutely. Yeah. All those things happen for a reason. Yes. Race. And um, we didn't even know, fast forward, we'll get to that in a minute, but we didn't even know that God had something even better for us later down the road, years yeah. later. Yeah. But we'll get to that. We'll but anyway, that, keep yeah. going. So your no, so, first job. So my first job. Out of the I NFL. Got, out of the NFL. <laughs> and thank, I mean, I'm very thankful yeah. for this job because it really, like you said, you got to get out there and go and do something. Yeah and it keeps you busy. Um, get out of your comfort zone. Get out of your comfort zone. You gotta think, you know, it keeps you from staying at home thinking the thoughts you, you were gonna yeah. have. Um, but some good friends of ours um, that we had just met became really good friends and they were our, they are best our best friends. friends. Yeah. Um, he owned a construction company. 
Building and framing houses. Building and framing houses. And I said, I just need some work. I got to get out and work and provide for the family. He said, Mike, I don't have a, a spot for you on in construction, but I do need a cleanup guy around the construction site. I said, I'll take it. So he went from playing in the NFL, being on ESPN Spotlight, to sweeping up floors at a construction site. To, to go, running touchdowns. Yeah. You know to what I mean? To, 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 to flip sweeping the, the floors. To yep. sweeping the floors. But you know what yeah. I love about my husband? He is the most humble, amazing man that he never ever, I don't want to get emotional, but I was crying when I shared the story, but he never complained about it. He, he never acted like he was better than that. And he did what he had to do for our family. And even though it was only like $500 a week income, <laughs> we were thankful for that. Thankful for we were it. Thankful for it. And we struggled and we hit rock bottom. Mm -hmm. But he did all he could and he put in all that work in that time, you know, and, and God honored that, you know, yeah. and ended up getting him a little better job, you know, years down the road. So, so Mike, so coming from where we come from, you know, um, you know, we weren't exposed to too much. You know, we were exposed to sports and drugs. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That was pretty much uh, you know, was only it. two way out, right? Yeah. It was sports or drugs, you know? And most people that came, you know, hang with us, they either got shot, went to jail, dead, mm -hmm. or really didn't do, do much with themselves, right? And, um, and even if they are there, they're like a, a big old chip on their shoulders. Right. Like, like, I'm too good for this. I'm not gonna do this and all that kind of stuff. You know, I'm sitting down here witnessing you. You know, you're such a grateful person. Mm -hmm. You have such a grateful heart. You know, you know, how did you, how, were you always like that? Or, you know, or, uh, you know, how, how, it's hard for me to see someone being positive, you know, yeah. going from NFL, ESPN, to Super the Floors, you know, within yeah. months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I don't know, I think ever since, I mean, the better, the better people to answer that is the people that are, that are around you. I mean, you hung around me all the time. Mm -hmm. um, did you ever hear me complaining? No, uh, did no. Did you ever hear me? No. I was always grateful. That's why I said, that's yeah. why, man, you come, yeah. hang with, you come and hang with yeah. us. Yeah, yeah. Always kept yeah. everything positive. I always wanted to stay away from anything negative. Yes. And, I'm, I'm, and you were, they were right next. I mean, I mean, look, man, your, your best friend got life. Yeah. You're, 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 you know, one of the people that we hang around with, he's, he got life he got in jail. Life. For, yeah, you know what for I mean? Murder. Yeah, and we, and we were all around that kind of stuff. Yeah. And, and for some reason, you always had this shield. You used to always stay focused on what you need to do. Whether it was sports or whether it was soup on the floor, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. You, were, you were focused on the task at hand. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And so, That's crazy. Uh, yeah. Um, and sometimes you always wonder, you know, where, you know, looking back on my life now, that that protection, that shield, like, you know, I was, when we used to talk about uh, my environment, our environment that we were in, it's like, why was that so special? Why would not made it? And I, and I always knew it was because I knew God was always looking down. And when I look back on it now, he had his hand around yeah. me. Yeah. He was shielding me um, because I always used to think, man, all my friends are getting approached by these drug dealers. All my friends, are, some of them are drug dealers themselves. Still, still, still. And I'm sitting there going, none of them approach me, or I'm sitting there going, did I get a pass, or do I did I get a pass when I was younger, just because I was the the, the star athlete in the town, and they knew I was trying to make something of myself or do something with my life. Um, I don't know, but I just knew I had a certain protection around me. But, but even I, though you were in the situation, you told me you would say, let me out of the car. Oh no, I'm getting no, out of the situation. Oh no, you know? there were there were. It's times. all about choice. Yeah. It, it is about choice, and, and so there was a few times where we would drive somewhere or be going somewhere, and they want to light up, and you know, and I would just tell them, if you're gonna do that, let me out. Yeah. And they keep telling me, stop being soft and stop being, yeah. you know. I'm you, like, no, let me out right now. You, you never let peer pressure get to you. You knew what you had to do when you stuck to your, you just stuck to your guns, man. That mm -hmm. I mean, that's just, that's so noble. That's so crazy. You know what I mean? And, and that's a definition of a one percenter, what I call one percenter. You know, it doesn't care about what everybody's doing. You know, Warren Buffett said, you know, if you want to be successful, look at what everybody else is doing and do the opposite. Do the opposite. You know what I mean? Exactly. You know what I mean? And, that, and that's the definition of one percenter. Yeah. You're not trying to be popular. You're not right. trying to be cool. You just stay in your lane and right. do what you're doing and you're right. winning one day at a time. Right. You know, and, and I, I, I love that, man. Just, I, I mean, you haven't changed. You're the same. You know, you, have, you laugh the same way. You know, you like, 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 like your, your, your whole same, you know, positive attitude, mm -hmm. same gratitude, man, it, it's crazy. It's so hard, you know, to, like I said, 
to get out of there, to get out of that environment that we had and still have gratitude, mm -hmm. you know, you know that's, that's, that takes a special person. Mm -hmm. He is a special guy. Pretty special. You're pretty special. I'm a lucky girl. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you blew him off though first. <laughs> but little did I know I was going to marry somebody with the same mindset, drive. mindset yeah. same drive. Yes. And, you know, um, I didn't know that when I first met her, but as we got to know each other a lot more, I'm like, man, she, she thinks like I do. And or we think the same. But she got three jobs. <laughs> hey, man, I mean, hey, look, man, yeah. you know, I mean? you know, like, you know oh that, that, that right there, man. And, that, you know, just to boast on her, even though um, I made it to the league and, you know, that time, you know, where she could have, I mean, she never let down her dreams, yeah. but even though I was living mine, she, she had enough, you know, on her home, taking care of the baby, yep, taking care of what and, and take care of me and while I'm pursuing my dreams. And so now when, when, when all those dreams went away, and she never let down her dream. I'm going to be honest with you right yeah. now. I'm gonna, can I be honest with you all? Yeah. So before I knew the whole story, you know, be a little bit long from when I, when I seen us, I'm like, yeah, you know, you know, she made it to NFL and he, he you know, he, he, she, she wanted to be with an NFL player. <laughs> you know, she's one of those. Oh, we got that. She, we got she, that yeah, yeah. She, she, she one of them hot girls, you know, yeah. she's hot. She looks good. Yeah. She, she wanted the NFL man to take care of her, you yeah. know, that kind of yeah. stuff, man. And that we was my it. first impression. We and I'm sure that's like most people's first impression. Oh, yeah. But yeah. boy, was I wrong you know what I mean that's why that's why they say like don't judge a book by its cover you know what I mean like like she got, she knew you before you had you know she was making she was making more money you know cocktail waitress than you right, were you yes. know what I'm saying? <laughs> well I mean you, look, you know you take that same concept what you're saying I, I said when I first met her she made more money yeah. than, than I did right yeah. so I get to the league and that's over with I'm out of the league she starts her own business yeah. She's still making more money yeah, yeah, than I ever yeah. made. <laughs> I, 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 and that's something I want to talk about, you know. Yeah. That's something I want to talk about, because, you know, because you, you, Mike, you're so humble and, and, and so cool, man. But, yeah, but yeah it, 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 it's, it's amazing. So going back, you know, so you're sweeping the floor, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And how long did you, did you do that for? I did that for about two years. Two years. It was about two years. Um, and then one day we were um, at the zoo because she made me go to the zoo. Um, and I didn't want to go to the zoo. And I, I was just getting done with work. I'm like, I'm tired. I just want to relax. She's like, no, we're taking the kids to the zoo. They deserve to have some fun. So anyway, long story short, a guy was sitting next to her and um, she, he, had, she had, mentioned, he had mentioned my name mm -hmm. to her. Are you, uh, are you by chance you know, related or married to Mike Archie? And, he, and she said, yeah. So long story short, I came up and met him. He took us out to lunch, told me what he did, uh, worked for an accounting op uh, office. Um, he actually owned the accounting firm and he asked me what my degree was in and I told him that. And then he said, did you ever think about working in accounting and finance? I said, absolutely. And- uh, Yeah, job for me? And, yeah, and I mean, he basically, even though I didn't have any experience, this was a guy you who- didn't have a accounting degree. I didn't, didn't have an accounting degree. You weren't a CPA, degree. you weren't a CPA. You, you, you a got CPA. your degree in hotel restaurant management, yeah, right? Yeah. See, I remember that. Yeah, well, and so awesome. um, he basically stepped out on faith and hired me um, because I think he, what you say you look for in, in hiring when people- you're hiring yeah. athletes. I think based that's on what, that, that's, based that's on what that. he was looking yep, for. Yep. And, 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 and for that same reason, he hired me and then I just learned on the spot. I was a fast learner, quick learner, and I mean, it was just for years. Um, and when I first started, I wasn't that great at it, yeah. but two, three years into yeah. it, yeah. I was yeah. like clockwork. Um, but yeah, he hired me. Um, so then you were making about what? We always put everything out there. About a year? What yeah. Making there? yeah um, I was probably making about... 40,000. So we were happy because when he, did, he was doing construction and stuff, that was what, 20,000? That was 20. That, so, that was, so, so you got double your so double we got pay. double, we got cool. up to 40,000. Yeah. So, you know, we're thankful. We're, we're, still, tr we're still struggling. So, we're still, yep. but we're, you know, we're getting a little ahead. And then. At, le um, at, le at least you can go and buy groceries. Or, right. or, 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 or I think at sometimes you, you, I remember in some of your interviews that you were deathly afraid of grocery stores oh, yeah. be, you know, because your car oh, yeah. kept declining, yeah. right? Car yeah. picked, uh, that happened so many times staying yeah. in the grocery store yeah. line. I would, I would text him because there'd be lots of times I would be embarrassed and be swiping my card. Sorry, ma'am, says insufficient funds. I'll get a call. Do we have enough money in, in the bank account? I'm like, I'm pretty sure groceries. we do. I gotta get groceries. How much are you, how much are you planning to spend? And it's like, 
And then I'd pick out, I'd get my wallet after one would decline. I'd get my wallet and I'd bring out another card. Nope, decline insufficient funds. And I'd get out another, another card, card. And these people were behind me. You know, what, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go home and get some money. I'll be back. Don't go. Don't, <laughs> don't don't put my stuff stuff back. Yeah, yeah, don't put yeah. my stuff back. Leave it. Don't. Right. Hey, I'm like, I, just I need that chicken. I need that chicken. <laughs> but there were times where I had to. I remember it was two times I had to leave the groceries there because I didn't have the money. And I would get in the car and I would just cry and I would pray and I'm like, God, there's got to be something, something. I'm like, I. I've got, I want better for our kids. I don't want them to go through the same struggle, the stress and the worries and finances like we did growing up. I was like, there's gotta be more. So anyway, he ended up getting promoted uh, after that job to our church. He worked at our church for how many years? 14 years. 14 nice. years. 14. And when, let's see, when did I hear about, the, when was this business opportunity you brought to me? Uh, March, 2009. March, 2009, he was working for the church, but again, we're just paycheck to paycheck. And thank God for some of our friends, like the ones that hired him to be a part of the construction crew. Uh, I'm gonna give him a shout out, Ron and Tanya. Um, they're so thankful for them, but yeah. so many times we couldn't pay our bills, you know, and they would they would help us to pay that electric bill, to pay, you man, know. Man, that's, that's some good friends, man. I mean, we, we would have to. Ron and Tanya, if you listen to this, man, I, I need my bills. <laughs> You know, Ron and Tanya Cerrillo helped you know, us out I, so I, I, put, I put the electric on my mama name. <laughs> <laughs> but we're so thankful for them when I look back. But yeah. um, when I, even when I started this business, um, there were times that I needed things for the business to help grow my business that we would have to take some things to the pawn shop. You know, we, our kids would come home from school I and heard, say, where's no. my video game? Hey, I heard about that. Oh, yeah. You took the Nintendo <laughs> to the pawn shop? To the pawn shop. My kids will, my you kids will cut my throat. <laughs> <laughs> my kids will cut my throat. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I felt like a terrible mom. I'm like, here I am trying to find things that we can take to the pawn shop so we can either help pay a bill or to help get my business going, you know, things like that. But I love anyway, this. so a friend uh, shared a business opportunity with me. It's a direct sales company. And I immediately was like, no. You know, you know, a lot of people when they say, ah, it's a pyramid, ah, yeah. this, ah, it's that. Yeah. You know, everybody, I was always close-minded, you right? You have that in your you head. Know I mean? it's you all, know what I mean? It's all close-minded, yeah. man. You know, mm -hmm. you can't knock something to really research right. it. You, you can't are. knock somebody to, you know, do that. And um, so many people have told me, you know, um, you know, that everybody needs to be in some kind of network marketing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know yeah. what I mean? You know, and um, so go ahead. It's changed our life, yeah. but... She brought this to me and like you, I had that, you know, those things don't work, you know, the pyramid thing. And I'm like, and sales? I said, I'm the last person on earth that could sell anything. I was like, that's just not me. Yeah. That is so not me. I mean, he knew it. I was like, babe, I yeah, brought him the opportunity, showed him the facts, the numbers. And he said, babe, this sounds like a no brainer. Yeah. He's like, I know you can do this. I said, babe, I'm not a salesperson. I'm not a, a leader. I'm like, I can't see myself doing this. And, and, he, and he was so encouraging. And he's like, honey, I've watched you lead this home and our children. And you've been such a leader. That's he's exactly like, you have more. He was, you know, when I was encouraging him and he played in the NFL, babe, yeah. you can do this. You're That's the best. You're, and then I, he reversed it onto me. And he's I like, sure no, did. baby, you can hey, do this. Can he's do like, this. this is in you. See, you that, that, that's such an honorable uh, character, you know, to have that. I'm not sure I'm as honorable as you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not, I'm not sure, you know, I still got a little ego. I still got some, I still got some issues I'm working through. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like, I'm just telling you right now, man, I'm like, see, what? No, nah, man, I, I got this. You yeah. sit, sit your ass home and watch the kids. You know what I mean? You know, and, and most men, most husbands, are like that, yeah, I'm and like, yeah. they, I don't, I've been so blessed to have such a supportive husband. You really do, man. You a really lot do. of my business partners, you know, from the beginning, their husbands weren't on board and they weren't supportive of it, and they thought it was a joke, and they didn't, you know, it was like, it's a waste of your time, I'm not supporting this, so I'm so thankful that he always had my back and was my biggest cheerleader, because I don't know how I would have done it. And she always had my back. No, that, that, that's so awesome, though. Yeah. I mean, that, 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 that is how you know you're a real couple together working as a team to, for the same result. Right. Yep. I mean, no, no, I yep. love, I love that. Yeah. I love that. So he would go to work all day and I would ready to pull my hair out with all the kids. You know, we had four kids at the time. We have six now, but yeah. I wanted to pull my hair out and uh, he'd come home from work and I'd be out the door because I had to go to a business meeting yeah. or a training or appointment, whatever. And, you know, it was hard for our kids at first because they were used to mommy being home all the time. They got 24 seven. Attention. 24 yeah. seven. So it was different to see mommy doing something now, you know, but I kept telling him and I kept telling the kids, you know, 
just give me time, just let me do this. It's sacrifice. I had to sacrifice so much that people don't realize. People see successful people. Oh, yeah, they see you they now. Think, they see you oh, now. Oh, they just got lucky or they, they see just you know now. the right people. Yeah. Let me tell you this. When I started the business, there was a lot of misconception, uh, misunderstanding from people thinking that I was successful because of him playing in the NFL. Yeah. That it was all of our NFL friends. I would have thought that if I didn't know any better. Yeah, no, no. Nope. There was that. I out had. There. The majority, I love them all now. I mean, I've always loved them. I don't mean to say that. I've loved all of my friends. But when I started the business, um, none of my good friends, none of our NFL friends, nobody joined us. Some of them have now because they see my success. Well, because, you know, because, you know, nobody wants to take a risk. Right. right. They want you to go first. They and then they want to they they say, okay, let me see if she falls. Let me see if she right. falls. Let me right. see if she falls. Oh, she didn't fall. Oh, right. she didn't fall. I'll take the risk. They're waiting yeah. and watching. Yeah, waiting yeah, yeah. And watching. Right. And, um, like I said, I, I would come to him crying and I said, babe, I told you how I'm going to do this business. I said, everybody's telling me no. Like, I can't get anyone, nobody to support me, nobody to buy a product off of me. Mm -hmm. I said, see, I am not good at selling. Now, I saw in some <laughs> interview that Mike said, look, if you're going to do this, we're going to do this. But I don't want to talk about this in the next, until the next three years. Three, we're going to go three yeah. to five years, and then through five years we're going to have. So, but until then, yeah. he 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 brought that sports mentality yes. into it, right? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Go <laughs> practice. Right. Shut up. Yes. You know, do your thing. And yeah. through the five years, let's evaluate where let's we are. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Exactly, exactly what he that's said. Exactly what He's I like, said. don't come to me. We're giving. We're saying this is a three to five year You're plan, good. and we're going to check in on year three, and then we'll check in and we'll year see five. how things are going. And year three. Kane, how do you, how do you, what do you want to do now, babe? What do you say? There's no way I'm stopping now. No. And so year five came, I said, I don't even think we need to meet. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want, we, there's no more meeting, there's man. No more Go, meetings. keep, keep about, doing your thing, girl. There's no more meetings about, you know, our company. But he, at first, and, and he was so supportive and my biggest cheerleader, like I mentioned, but after, I don't know how many years into the business. It was probably about the second. No, no, I was saying when you were getting a little, you're like, babe. It'd be late at night, you know, and I'm still on my computer falling asleep. Oh, you who's getting my you know, time? Like, who's what's getting my time? time? Yeah, like, yeah, what's you know what I'm saying? Time? Hey. You know, and he'd sit over there and pout, and I'd sit on his side of the yeah. bed, and he'd be pouting. You got, you okay. got, you got this hot wife that's working all the time. <laughs> you'd be like, hey man, like I got man needs, man. Well, like, you know, hey, 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 hey. I mean, I, mean, I, I we saw how the kids reacted. You know, they're like, man, mommy's not here. You know, I'm, I'm sitting there going, I, I need mommy too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she there Your kids said, I want mom. Said me. Me too. <laughs> me too. I want mommy too. And I kept telling him, I said, babe, I said, just, just, just keep sticking with me. I said, trust me. I said, I'm going to retire you. I'm going to retire you from this job and all the things that we dream for our family. I said, we're going to be able to do it. I said, but I need this time. If you could just be patient. And he's like, okay, I'm being patient. I just, I just need some of my courage time just every <laughs> once in a while. So anyway, so, you know, everybody thinks that, like I said, it's just, oh, she got lucky and she just knew all the right people. No, you know, I love the business that I'm in and the industry that I'm in because I can work it around my family. Yep. I can choose my hours. I can choose when and where but I But you work. still got to work. But you still got to work. You still got to hustle, you know? ain't it? Mean? I, I had to watch. When I started that business, I didn't watch TV. There wasn't years. I finally started. You started getting me into a couple yeah. of things. But it took me 10, 11 years to start watching TV yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because to me, Watching on The Bachelorette mission. was not going to get me closer to my dreams. Right. Amen. It's not, and I remember one of my mentors, um, Gabriel Sedlak, love him. Um, there's so many people I could shout out, but I remember him, we talked about doing a vision board. And I still to this day, even though all of my dreams have come true and I can't even imagine, I still am dreaming even bigger. And I keep making mm -hmm. those vision boards. But I remember I put my vision board and I put it in front of, front the, of TV. the TV. And one day he I, came home. I came into the to the bedroom and there's this vision board. Watch this. There's a vi there's a vision board in front of the TV. <laughs> so I made the fatal mistake to go reach for the vision board to take it down. To watch some ESPN. To watch ESPN <laughs> something. And she looked at me with that look. Do not take my vision board down. I was like, don't don't take my don't, dreams aside. Don't take my side. dreams aside you so know? you can watch TV. I'm like, ooh. Yeah. She means business. So I'm like, okay. So at that time. She wasn't interested in watching the game. She was interested in getting in the game. Exactly, right? exactly. So if I wasn't building my business, I was doing some type of personal development. Yep. Because when I started this business, I didn't have the belief in myself that I could do it. I didn't see myself as a leader. I didn't see myself that I could be this. I mean, I knew what I wanted, but I had that, I had just had that negative Nelly in my ear telling me I wasn't good enough. And we all have that. Yeah. And when I, when I had a light bulb moment, uh, one of my other mentors, Sarah Robbins, 
I would listen to her and talking about, you have to get that stinking thinking out of your head because it's gonna get in the way of everything. Yeah. You have to change your mindset yeah. or you're never gonna get, you can have all the tools, all the training, all the everything that you need, but if you do not change that mindset yeah. and get rid of that stinking thinking, I don't care what you know, yeah. you're not gonna be successful. Yeah. You're not gonna be successful. So the day that I turned that light bulb on, mm -hmm and changed my mindset, that's when everything changed for me. Yeah. And I had to do personal development to build me up, yeah. to build Crystal up. Because who in the world is gonna wanna join me in business yeah. or listen to me if, if I don't even yeah. listen to me? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I have to take care of Crystal first. Yes. And get my mind right before I can go out and pour into other people. Absolutely. Because in our industry, all it is is loving on and pouring into people and bringing out the best Absolutely. in others and lifting them up and watching them shine. Yeah. Now, I'm at the point where I just wanna be the girl in the back. I want to be the girl in the back, cheering on everybody else, watching them and pushing them to the front, letting them shine. You basically have reached what I call the highest level of success mm -hmm. because now your success is rubbing off on other people, mm -hmm. which now puts you in a category called significance. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You know, you know, when we are, when you were, you know, struggling, mm -hmm. you know, all you can think about is how can I buy groceries? Right. You know, how can I, you know, make sure I don't get kicked out? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But when now you reach at a level where, you know, you have everything, all your dreams have come true. Now your fulfillment is to help other people, other people. reach that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yep. And Same. that's better than anything. Yes. You can help other people achieve their dreams. Yes. That feels better than anything out there. No matter what car, what well, vacation, the... what, when you can help somebody else and they're able to, you know, retire from that yes. job that they hate mm -hmm. or pay for that adoption or, I mean, I could go on and on and on. That's what brings, I cry, don't I? Every time yeah. somebody shares a story What's with that us. one quote you always say, um, if you help enough people. Yeah, uh, Jim Rohn, I think, says it. Yeah. Get what you they want, get what other you want. people, get what they want, go after their dreams. Before you know it, your dreams are gonna Simple. come true. Simple, a lot of people don't understand that. It's all about getting them, get what they want, get they, right. what they want, get they want. And when you do that, you turn people off and right. nobody's attracted to you. Right. You know what I mean? But if you go with a help, help in hand and you help people, yep. man, trust me, man. And I've, I've, I've learned that yeah. firsthand. Yeah, that's another mistake I made in the beginning. I was about me, 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 and me trying to reach my goals and me, and I was turning so many people away. And that's another thing that I learned um, through people like Jim Rohn and other uh, amazing leaders in the industry that you have to listen to people, shut up, and take the time to listen to other people and hear their hearts and hear their dreams. And that's another shift in my business. When I stopped vomiting mm -hmm. so much all over people and I didn't take the time, I was talking listen. about me too much, and I didn't take the time to listen to them. And when I changed that, yeah. I noticed that's another key uh, yes. point in my business that it started to take off because I was listening and loving Absolutely. all people yeah. and helping yeah. them. And like you said, the more people I can help achieve their dreams before I knew it, I was like, Well, you guys wow. are a loving family. Earlier, you know, you said adoption, mm -hmm. right? And I know you guys adopted, mm -hmm. you know, how many? Kids? We've got Getu, we, he's been with us since he was 10 years old. Mm -hmm. And then Mesfin um, came here on a student visa and now he's 21. 21. But, 21. Yeah. So um, it was a, that was always a dream of mine too. You know, when I was a little girl, I don't know where it came from, living in my little small town. We had no diversity where I grew up. Um, I should have gone two hours away to see all of you guys where all the diversity was, but <laughs> where I was, there was no, no diversity, diversity whatsoever. Um, so I don't know where that came from, but I always had the desire to go to Ethiopia of all places. Like, it was my dream. I, mean, dream. I, know, I know exactly what it was. It, it was that commercial yeah. that, 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 yes. that, that, that kids were over here and were protruding belly protruding, and, there was, and, yes. and, and had flies on their yeah. face. Yes. You know, I and remember those commercials. It just did something to me, and I said, that's my dream. I'm going to go there one day. I don't just want to send the check off. I don't I want to wanna, I don't wanna send 35 cents a day. Right. I, you know what I, mean? I want to go. I want to do the go. real thing. I want to yeah. go, yeah. and I want to have my own organization. And you guys recently went back. Yeah, I, I go all the time. <laughs> I've lost count how many times. It's my second home. I've got it tattooed on me. I love Ethiopia. Um, but I remember the first time we stepped foot on ground in Ethiopia. Most people's dreams are, you know, to go someplace elaborate, you know, just out of this world. And my dream, I just wanted to go be with the poorest of the poor and just so be hands-on with these people. And so that good. was my dream. And I just broke down crying. Broke down I was like, crying. here I am, a small-town girl, and now I'm living my dream being able to do what I feel like I'm called to do, you know? So now, you know, you go to visit Ethiopia, obviously it's a third world country, you know, people are starving and all that kind of stuff. And now you come back 
and now you basically have talking about p people about business, about success, and like that. You see stuff right in front of them that they can take and, and just run with and, and change their life, and people still don't want to do that. Oh, I know. You know what I mean? And 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 how's that make you feel? Like I mean, like I mean, to me, it's like sometimes I want to like bang my head yes. to the wall, yes. you know, because I mean, there are people are starving. You know, I mean, we live in the greatest economy yes. of the world. We, have we you know we live in the greatest country in the world where you know. Know, you know anything is possible right. you know there's people who no matter what they do that they can get out they yeah. can get out this is you know and now I feel like a bunch of us are a bunch of spoiled brats yeah. that that take everything that America is founded on mm -hmm. you know for granted yeah that's one of my it's been one of the things I've had a hard time dealing me with. too I've had to learn to let it go because you know, you bring people in to join you in business and you want to see the best for them and you really want to, you know, they get in, they're fired up, they're so excited. I'm going after my dream, this is what I'm, and then a few weeks in or a couple yeah. months in, they're like, this isn't working out for me, I can't do this, you know, I told you these kind of things don't work. I'm going, what are you talking about? What do they want to do, a million dollar following the life? Like, yeah, <laughs> like, I think they look at opportunities and, and they expect money to fall to the sky and it just to be handed to them and everybody's gonna just jump on board. I'm like, guys, it doesn't yeah. work like that. Everybody told me no. I got no after no after no after no after no. I cried, I had disappointment after disappointment and I had to keep getting back up. Get knocked down, get back up. Get knocked down, get back up. Go to those calls, do that training, do, go to this meeting when nobody would show up. Go to a meeting and nobody would show up. I, I could have quit. Well, Chris, I'm in a fitness <laughs> business, man. I got people come in, you know, uh, on 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 Thursday, say, man. You know, I'm so sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm tired. Of, I don't feel good. I need to lose weight. I'm, I'm ready, man. I'm, I'm just going to do this. I, I, you know, you know, this is it. You know, it's my last chance. And on Monday, don't show up. Right. You know what I mean? You know I mean? Don't show up. You know what I mean? And, and I'm going like, out. yeah, yeah. So, so I think, you know, one, one thing I learned in life, you know, back in high school, sometimes in college, you know, they graded everybody on a bell curve. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I found out that life is like a bell curve. You know what I mean? Some people just get it and take it and run with it. Mm -hmm. You know, some people, you know, do okay with it. Some people do mediocre with it. And some people just don't do nothing with it. Right. And blame others. Right. You know blame what I mean? others. Yeah. They'll take the yeah. CEO meant, you know, they want to blame other people for, for their lack of yes. success. Well, I wasn't successful because, and then they want to do all this. No, you're not successful because you yeah. chose yeah. not to go above and beyond. Yeah. I've had people tell me, you know, I just, I guess I just, if I'd be honest with myself, I wasn't willing, I watched you and I wasn't willing to do what you've done. Yeah. You know, you've gone above and beyond and you did the things that I didn't want to do. You have to do the things you don't want to do to get to where you are. Did I love all the so stuff that good. I had to do? No. And there was a lot of times that I wanted to throw something at the wall, yeah. but my dreams for my family, my why was more, it was bigger than that. And I said, I have to do this. I don't care how many times well, I, I mean, I mean, I mean, Mike is five, eight, you know, <laughs> like, like, you know, I mean, like, I mean, I'm, I, you know, I we talk, still, I mean, you know, yeah. I'm five, you know how many times he got knocked out on yeah. the field and all yeah. that kind of stuff? Believe me, you know, I but, but, but he had to do yeah, he had to do what he had to do. That, that's yeah. what got you in the NFL. Yeah. You know, but nobody wants to go through the pain. Right. Nobody wants to go through the consistency. Right. Nobody, you know, you know, everybody wants to work out for a week and I'll be all swole. Right. Or right. everybody wants to just like, okay, have one salad and one workout and, right. and, 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 and stay hundred pounds. Yeah, you know what I mean? They're done. Yep. Right. Nobody wants to do and the I, consistent work. I gotta work. say that too, when before he went to the NFL, everybody told him he wasn't gonna make it because he was too small. You know, everybody told me he wasn't going to make it. So I could have I could have just lived on that and quit or gave heard up. Heard that. You could have listened no, to that. No, I mean, just like life, you, everything you do, you got to work hard at it. And it's not just going, they, you think the NFL just fell on my, fell <laughs> no, on my I know, life? no. I know, no. I know the workouts. I know, workouts. I know the workouts. I know the workouts. You and live and breathe, breathe. sports. Yes. I live and breathe. You were the sport. You were sports. Yeah. You know, and not only not only you did it, you studied it. Right. Yeah. You know, you 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 know, you studied, studied sports. You studied yep. the players. You studied. Yep. You became a professor of the game. Of the game. Yep. And so that and that it just doesn't fall in your lap. You just got you got to continue to work hard. I don't care. You're right. You're gonna get knocked down. You're gonna lose. I've lost some games. And all that. It don't matter. You got to get back up and just get back at it. And I love, I love the quote. I always share it. Entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is living a few years of your life like most people won't, so you can spend the rest of your life like most people can. Yeah. Because people, most people aren't willing to do it. They're, they're just not. Well, like you know, our normal way that pretty much everybody, our, our, our hard drive is to choose comfort. 
right. over pain. Right. You know, you know, who, who wants to go for a run right now rather than, oh, let's sit down and we'll do, do exactly. Netflix, right? Exactly. You know, who, who wants to go, you know, do something that's unknown rather than doing something now? Exactly. And, and, you know, and we all know, you know, nobody achieve anything being in their comfort zone. No. Nobody. 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 You know what I mean? America, <laughs> America would have been founded if Christopher, Christopher Columbus didn't get out of the comfort zone because right. people thought he was going to fall off the earth. Right, right, right. You know what I right. mean? Right. He goes, no, I'm, I'm going to go, I'm going to go check it out. Right. You know what I mean? So, if you, you know, if unless you're willing to get out of that comfort, unless you're willing to push your limits beyond, and unless we, I've learned, you know, over the years, man, you know, you know, I'm I'm kind of a I'm a weird person. I told you I have issues. You know, like I I, I got I got issues. Man. I, got I got no problem. You know what I mean? You know I mean? I got issues. Like like I'm, I'm a hot mess. You know, coming from where we come from, mm -hmm. you know, I was like I got to do this every day to become successful. I got to win the day, and for me to win the day, I got to do these right. Mm -hmm. Even though most people say like, okay, well, say I'm good. You're good now. You're good now. I, I you know, for me, I got to win the day still. Yeah. Right. And like my wife, she's she likes to chill. <laughs> you know, like, like she, like, and, 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 and that's a good balance. It's a yeah. good balance, you know what I mean? But, and, and her language of love is let's cuddle, let's watch, it, ooh, let's watch, let's watch Netflix, you yeah, know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. And, and I mean, I'm like jumping out of my skin. I'm jumping out of my skin. I'm like, I can't be watching this, man. I'm like, I feel guilty. I'm like, I need to like that's do work on do something. That's I need to I do something and all that kind of yeah. stuff. So now, so now, knowing what her language is and what she want, wants and all that, so I've learned to be so you know, so um, immaculate with my time management. Right. I mean, you see right there, when you look over there, I show you my schedule. Every minute, every hour is accounted for. Like so, me. so. He laughs at me. You, you and I are the same. You gotta, you, I know, I know about your checklist. I know about your checklist. Oh. <laughs> oh. So, you know, you know, so, so, so once I figured like this, I'm like, all right, so by five o'clock, I can Netflix, but I gotta crush this right. now. Gotta I gotta Netflix. crush this. Right. If I don't crush this, I can't you Netflix. Can't I, I can't, yeah, I can't yeah, focus, right? So now I'm like, okay, if I'm gonna earn, I gotta earn Netflix. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, I gotta <laughs> earn it, man. I gotta crush that. You're, you're you know what I mean? But we need balance. That's why yeah. you got, we need each other. Because right. you leave it up to us, we will work ourselves to yeah. death. <laughs> you know what I mean? We'll work, we'll work around the clock, you know what I mean? This well, and that. Amy and, yeah. Amy and the kids are always telling me, they're like, he's like, babe, when are you going to slow down? And you're, he's like, you're good. Like, you've reached the set, you know, yeah. you've reached your goal. You're good. You're good. You know? But I just have that mentality. It's like, no, there's a, there's, there's a whole community in this trash dump in Ethiopia where I go to all the time. There's like almost 200,000 people there that live in a trash dump area. I said, no, there's no slowing down. I want to bring new homes to those people. I want to be able to help them create jobs. I want to change lives there. And like, there's no slowing down. My dreams just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and the more people I want to help. Two of my mentors, they have this saying, one of them says, you know, you know Ed Milet says that he's blessfully dissatisfied. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's good. You know, I like you know that. he's blessfully dissatisfied. I used to be that person that was always dissatisfied. You know, I would, I would, I would get, get to a goal, be like, okay, cool, what's next? Yeah. Okay, cool, what's next? Right. Cool, what's next? So then I, then I, I, I found myself always like, a, like, like not happy because yeah. I was chasing the next thing and yeah. chasing the next thing and chasing the next thing. Yeah. You know, then my pastor said that, you know, Sam, you know, you know you're not where you want to be, but thank God where you're not where you used to be. Right. You know what I mean? And that now puts everything in everything perspective where yeah. now I'm like, okay, you know, hey man, hey, we, we're, we're doing good. We're doing good. You can sit a little bit of time and celebrate. Hey, it's okay to, yes. to watch a show, yes. you, know, you know, once a week. You know right. what I mean? I mean? All that kind of stuff. Right. You know what I mean? Well, so good, you and know, I'm at that place now. No, that's what I was going to say. And I'm, I'm at that I'm, place I'm now. that counterpart that says, yeah. even though she's going all the time, go, go, go. I mean, always changing the world, want to do something great. I always tell her, you, you, you've earned Yeah a time to sit down and watch yeah. a TV yeah. show. And now I do that. Right now. <laughs> yeah. And now just I... Just relax for a minute. Just take a deep just, breath. And in. we travel all the yeah. time. Yeah. I try yeah. to keep my foot... You know, of course, we got to Instagram everything. Yeah. You know, you know, so that's just... <laughs> he's an Instagram husband, but... <laughs> But um, but now you know like we can take that time and to relax and but still my my point is I'm content and I'm very blessed and I'm so thankful. But Maybe you want more. But I just want you to, want to achieve to more. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's yeah. not about more things. No, it's not no, about more no, things no, and no. more. What no. more can I get? It's no, not that. It's, no. I don't want to leave this world until I made a huge imprint and a, to leave a legacy for my children and their children and their children. Because you can stop now and, and your life doesn't change. Right. You know what I mean? Like you, 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 you got to that level. Now it's all about fulfillment. 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 Right. I just want to help as many people as I can and, and teach them this mindset. Let me know? ask you a question. Do you ever have, have, 
put, put your phone away and say, you know what, I'm not gonna be near my phone for the next five hours. Yeah, I have. Do you do that? He's not gonna, I have. There's times where I put my phone, I've been very good lately, don't you lie. <laughs> <laughs> did, I, did I open when up a can of worms? <laughs> when we're at dinner and stuff, I've, have, I've been very good. I plead the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> it's just when you're in my type of business too, I mean, I'm sure you understand, you know, with. You just phones dinging and everybody just needing you all the time. You know, it's never ending. It's so, just so well, Crystal, ding, 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 ding. Crystal, you you know how, you know how you learn to be uncomfortable. You know, starting your business, you get learn learn to be uncomfortable. You know, getting nose and getting nose and, and right. yeah, falling down and falling down. Now I learn to be uncomfortable. F at four o'clock, I put my phone away. Yeah. At four o'clock, I put my phone away. I, and that to me is uncomfortable. Yeah. But I'm like, I want to be uncomfortable. You know, because I'm not, I'm. I'm uncomfortable when I'm comfortable. Right. You know what I mean? So now that puts me in a in a situation where this is something that I gotta master. I gotta master. This is like a challenge to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah, I know because we both look, seem like we're type A personality. Yes, yes, you know what I mean? You know, and, 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 and it's hard for a type A personality to shut it off. Mike is a type A B personality. Yeah. He's A when it needs to be well, A. Yeah, you know what I mean? But he can shut it off. Like, you know what I mean? You know, like, we don't have a shut off button. Don't, don't you, you nailed it. Yes. Yeah. But um, what was I gonna say? Something I was going somewhere with. Um, you were talking about uh, putting the phone away. Oh, I've learned how to say no. That's what yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah. I've had to learn how to say no, and I've been very good at saying no yeah. to everybody yeah. wanting me all the time. I've had to learn to say no and be okay with that. Yeah. And I used to be so worried. I'm a people pleaser, and I want everybody to like me. And I just. I had to learn it. It's okay. Not everybody's gonna like me. There's a lot of people that do not like me, and I have to let it go. Let's speak about I that. I have to let it go. Let, let, let's speak about that a little bit. You know, um, thank you for bringing that up. You know, so I know. You know, as you have gone up, you know, in ranks, and you know, obviously you're out there. You know, you know, your life is out there. You know, uh, you know, because you you want to. Um, you want to inspire people, so 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 do I. You know, you know, you want. Hey, look, I, I came from nothing. Hey, you just came on the show and said, hey, we were on food stamps. Hey, we were on welfare. Yeah. You know, you talked about all your all the times and all that. You're very transparent, and obviously now you got to a certain level. With that certain level, you know, obviously comes the haters. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously come with people who you know, you know, talk crap and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. How do you avoid that? How do you stay on track? And um, I, I don't know, it was, it was like a, uh, gosh, a year ago or so, I, I was, you know, I, I saw your story or a post or something like that, and somebody threw a brick into your windshield or something like that yeah. in your car, in, in your brand yeah. new Mercedes yeah. or something yeah. like that, your, your Mercedes or whatever, and uh, I was like, wow, because I've experienced the same thing. I'm just curious to see how do you deal with naysayers and, and haters, at, you know, at the present moment. Like I said, I had, to, I had to let it go. I can't let the opinions of others and what they say about me stop me from what I'm doing because at the end of the day, they don't pay my bills. Yeah. And my family's number one. And I have to, that's another thing I had to learn. In the beginning, I was trying to be like other people and other leaders and yeah. mock what they were doing. And I've had a lot of light bulb moments in the past 11 years in this yeah. business and it was a moment where I just heard, you know, God just speaking to me saying, be you, Crystal. Yeah. You're not like those other people. Be you. Stop trying to be like other people. You're not them. You are a hot mess. You're full of flaws and you make yeah. mistakes and you're goofy and you're not polished. I am not polished. I get up and speak and I, it's it's a mess sometimes. But I mean, but, but, that, but, but that's mean. The, the, you know, you know, my pastor says that you were born an original. Mm -hmm. Don't die a copy. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yep. And and you know, people want someone who's relatable. Yeah. You know, I remember the first time I saw Tony Robbins live because I remember seeing Tony Robbins when I first came to America. Mm -hmm. He was like, you, he was this perfect, you know, guy and this and that. So when I when I first, I'm like, okay, but I couldn't really relate. But I went to one of his things and I was like, Tony came out and 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 dropped the f bomb. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I'm like. I love you. I'm like, you told you. I'm like, Tony said the F word. I'm like, Dude, he's like me. He, he's not perfect. You know what I mean? You know, and, and that automatically made me like bond with him that much better and bought all his courses and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And people want, you know, original. People want relatability. They don't want the same thing they've seen all that. And right. people can see right through that. Oh, yeah. You know? And we, you know, I'm, I've learned to just be me, whether yeah. they like me or not. I, have to, I just had to accept. People are going to like me or they don't. And I just, I have to be okay with that. And I can't let it keep me from sleeping at night because I'm not going to make everybody happy. I'm not going, everybody's not gonna like Crystal. <laughs> so, so let me ask you a question because you guys are, you know, you know Christians and, and, and devoted Christians and, and all that kind of stuff. Did Jesus make everybody happy? 
Everybody, he had a lot of haters. So, 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 you ain't, you ain't Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. <laughs> you ain't Jesus. Hey, he had haters. Hey, what makes you think you're not? We're not an exception. And, and, and that's why I always tell people, if Jesus had haters, right. if, if, you know, Martha Luther King had haters, mm-hmm. if, uh, you know, Mother Teresa, Gandhi had haters, yeah. man, you and I, man, you yeah, know, we, we have no hope. Had, yeah, yeah, I had some yeah. mentors tell me, you know, if you're not doing something big and something right, Right, then, you know, if people aren't talking about you, then you're no. not really making an impact. Well, the yeah, moment the you start to, to be successful right. and to shine, and yeah. to li- that's when everybody's going to try to come and attack you. And we've had people say, oh, you guys have changed. You guys have changed. Yeah. We, like, what, my, what, what, wait a second. Wait, wait a second. You know, aren't you supposed to change? That's exactly what we said. <laughs> that's it's that's leaders, evolution. That's, that's what, what leaders said. do. They so, change. They evolve. They get. They 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 better themselves. So if we, you, I'm you not changing that. in the mindset of what you're thinking, right. yeah. but I am changing. I'm changing. <laughs> Our address changed. Yeah, we might have got different clothes and things. I said, but yes, thank God I've changed because I've had to, I've changed into a leader. I've mm-hmm. changed into an entrepreneur. I've changed into, you know, uh, to a better mom, to a better, better husband, you know, you know, you know I mean? everything. Like, yeah. Yes, I've changed. Thank you. I should from now on say thank you. That's a <laughs> thank compliment. You. That's, That's what compliment. I was going for. I'm so glad that I got out of that stinking thinking negative mindset and that I have changed yeah. and that I'm dreaming even bigger. So thank right. you. Yo. Thank you. I have changed. <laughs> That's uh, that's crazy, man. You know, you know, I'm, I'm going like, you know, that's, that's, a, that was that's love. a definition of evolution. You're not supposed to be the same. You're not supposed to be that guy, you know, 20 years from now doing the same thing, wearing the same thing and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. You're supposed to change. Doesn't fashion change? Doesn't cars change? Right. Yeah. Doesn't planes change? <laughs> so should you, right. man. Everything changes, right. You know? Yeah, so. So now you guys build this amazing business. You know what I mean? Oh, before I forget. So she now is killing it in her business, right? And you're supporting her, you know? You know, I know, like I told you, let me tell you about my issue. And this is just a personal issue, you know what I mean? This is a personal <laughs> issue. Like, I'm a competitor, you know what I mean? I'm a competitor, you know, like, you know, my, my wife and I now are in a competition, you know, who, who, whose credit score is gonna be better, you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, like, 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 we talk oh, shit. Y'all go that deep? We, 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 we talk yeah. shit to each other, man. Like, we, 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 we don't, we I gotta have, you know, like, 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 we, 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 we go in there, like, 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 she's like, oh, I'm catching up. Mine went five points. Where yours? You know what I mean? You know, we, we got know, a like, new challenge, right? <laughs> we got a new challenge. You know, so, so you being humble, gracious, having gratitude, being the star, you know, being the mm-hmm. star, you know, you know, being NFL money and all that kind of stuff. And now, like I said, now you're the supporter. You know, now she's, you know, doing her thing and now you're supporting her and all that kind of stuff. You know, it takes a, a gentleman. It takes a man. Like I said, I'm not that guy. Like, I'm like, I'm like, what, how much you make? Oh, hell no. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, hell no. You know what I mean? Like, like, like you know what I mean? I, I would, I'm, I'm I would, top you know what I yeah. mean? That was, I'm just running like that. It, 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 it's just my, it's just my effed up mentality. You know what I mean? It's just like, you know what I mean? You know, how, how were you able to, you know, uh, how do you, how did you have not, not that mentality? You know what I mean? Because, because I know like she supported you. You're like, okay, it's my time just to support, right? Well, yeah, that, I mean, that was, that was basically my mentality because I love that. when I was going after my dreams and, and pursuing the NFL and the only thing I can think of is when I came home tired, uh, exhausted, even when I came home with stinking thinking, remember that? Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to make the team or, who was the first man, person? Eddie George is big. Man, Eddie George is big, man. He's <laughs> a big man. I don't know about you. I mean, she's like, baby, you're the best running back out there. Mm-hmm. Remember that. When you step foot on that field, you're the best running back. I don't care about them other running backs that are there. You're the best one there. And so with that kind of support that I had and, and what she gave me. so now It was a no-brainer. It was a no-brainer. It was a no-brainer. It was a no-brainer. When it was time, you know. I, I, one guy told me, he said, the smartest thing you can do as, as a, form, a former player or even before you become a, a professional athlete is marry a smart woman. That's in because the one she's supporting you on your time to shine is going to come one day. It's her time to shine. I love that. And, and he's still competitive. Don't let him lie to you. <laughs> Our children, even when they were little, he wouldn't. I'm like, you can't let them win one game. Like, you won't even let them win trouble. Like, he's competitive. <laughs> I'm still competitive in that, but, in that nature. I, but, yeah. but when it comes to me and the yeah. he's never, ever said. And you've had other guys ask you that, too. Like, man, Mike, how do you handle that? How you do know, you that handle that? She's the one, you know. 
And I, he doesn't even have that yeah, mentality. Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah but you, so, you, you know why. You know, you know why? Because you were there for him at his darkest yeah. moments. Exactly. You know, you were, you, you, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, you got the cut from the team. You were there from the beginning. You didn't get on when he was up. You got on when he was low. Right. And you stayed there when he got up. And right. you stayed there when he was exactly. low. Mm -hmm. So it was like, 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 so now it's kind of like reciprocity, yeah. right? Yeah, it's like yeah, reciprocity. Yeah. You're like, you've been there for him. Like, what kind of man wouldn't be right. there for, for the woman after all she's been through? Right. Right. So that, you know, so that's, that's, that's just amazing. So, yeah. I knew I knew it was a no brainer for me to give back what she gave to me, mm -hmm. and so I mean, and, and we're a team. And we're a team. Yeah. I mean, like she's the face of the business, and I'm the back office. I still do all my accounting. And we're number and crunching. <laughs> I'm the numbers crunching, but she's the face of the business, and yeah, so we're a team. I wouldn't have been we, able to do it without them. Yeah. So. That is that that is so awesome. So, the Archies, you know, what do you guys see yourself? you know, five years from now, 10 years from now, you know, what, what fulfills you? I know, I know you guys want to help people. I know yeah. you're, you're, you, you help, you know, you go to Ethiopia, you mm -hmm. give back, you know, you guys are such a philanthropist now, yeah. you know, but where do you see this in the five or 10 years and all that? Wow. wow. I know we, we, I know we're still always going to be helping people. Yeah. All the, um, and I know she has her passions and in, 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 in her ways and I support her and I go with her to Ethiopia. Um, and then I have my things that, that I'm passionate about, which is coaching and, and pouring into kids. Yes. And speaking into their lives, yes. speaking positively, giving them great, yeah. you know, just things that help them grow as, as, as men or, or women. I mean, I haven't coached any girls yet, but it's always, but it's, it's always been giving back and helping them. I can see you do that so well yeah. too. I can I see that so well. That's his gifting. He's so great with coaching and kids. He wants I, to have his own facility. Yeah. I, I, wa facility. I, I watch you with your kids, man. You know, I watch you with your kids and I'm like, man, he's such a great father. You know, you're such he a great is. dad, man. You know, you know, it, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's so good to see, you know, like a, a former athlete, you know, who was on top of the world now become such a selfless person. You know what I mean? You know, it's, you know, because most, most of them cannot be, you know, can, most of them are you know, you know, when you're an athlete, you have to be selfish. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's all about your training, yep. it's about your diet, it's about your practice, it's yep. about your rest, it's about your life. You know what I mean? Everybody else is a secondary, yeah. right? And now, you know, you, you know, you step out of that role and you just become this selfless man who supports your wife, take care of your children, you know, you know, giving away to everybody else. And now you're, you're letting the other youth bring up and be able to be able to have that confidence, have the tools to be able to make it out there, man. That's just so awesome. That's so, I mean, so cool, man. I, I, I love seeing that. You know, you, you, I feel like, you, you, like, you know, like Kobe was with his daughter. Mm -hmm. You were out with your kids oh, like don't that. don't make me cry. I know, say, I know, I don't know. Don't make me cry, but um, oh, yeah, future, we've been trying to work on, we've been asked so many times to work on a book. We, uh, so we're trying to get that going. If we can ever sit down and- Sit down and be still for a um, minute. <laughs> I have my first uh, piece of jewelry that helps my treasured organization, Ethiopia. That's so right, let's remember that. I would love to do more, uh, you know, I've got things in the works. I've got so many things in the works that I can't share right now, but well, there's gonna be more that we're gonna be diving into. Well, I cannot and I just wait. wanna, I really just wanna pour into people not just people in my business, but everybody, no right. matter what, what they're doing in life, no matter what career, what they're doing in life, I just wanna be able to inspire and uplift and teach them whatever that I've learned over the, you know, yeah. my lifetime. Yeah. Um, and I just, yeah, I just really wanna give that back yeah. is, to as many people as possible, so. Oh man, I'm blown away. I'm blown away. You know, you know, this was better than I thought. <laughs> you know, what I mean? better than I thought. I, like I said, I was telling you, I was looking so forward to having you guys on, yeah. seeing you after really 30 years. It, yeah. And you know, thank you for sharing your story, yes. your ups, your downs, and everything else in between. Yes, we are just us. so thankful to be here. Yes. We we had no idea. We're like, we don't know what we're talking about because we didn't we didn't even talk about it with yeah. you. Yeah. So he's like, what are we talking about with Sammy? I said, I don't know. We'll just get there. And we'll but, it. but one thing, <laughs> but I good, love that. But we love it because we're good at winging, just winging and just well, go with the what, flow because what, it's more natural. You know, it's, yeah. a, it's a conversation. Just you know, conversation. Not, like oh, we're like, oh, yeah. you know, you know I, I don't I don't ever script anything. Yeah, right. I don't. You know, I don't want to you know because I, I want to I want to be real right. raw. You know, and all that kind of stuff and. And it, you know, I don't want I don't want it ever to be like kind of come you know exactly. we're just talking yep. you know and that's it. Yeah. Yep. And we loved it. We're so happy to see you. I've heard so I'm many just, great yeah. things about you from him. Finally glad to get to see you after in all, person, these years, all these years. All these years. years. And you're doing and I big meant to things, say, yeah. big things. And I meant to say, I'm like, um, like when I saw you standing at the door, and I'm like, man, 
that's Sammy. I'm like, but he was so much smaller in high yeah. school. <laughs> Yeah, I was. I said, yeah. now look at him. I was like, you were like, oh man, yeah. you changed. Yeah, you, you know, changed. You, yeah, you, you, you know, changed. That's a good thing. you know, I, I don't know if you know the story. You know, you know, when I came to, you know, you know, I came over to God's concert. I said, I want to play soccer, right? And they're like, we don't have that. So now, I, now I was without a sport that I played all my life. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know what football was about. To this day, to this day, yeah. I don't know what baseball was about. Right. You know, I, I just know I'm like, know, what? How come there's so many different endings? I don't know none of that. Yeah. But so I, I knew basketball, and I knew that you had to. Put the ball in. <laughs> but you, so before you came over, you were playing soccer, or so. Yeah. So you, when you moved to Pennsylvania, Sharon, Pennsylvania. You just moved to the wrong region. <laughs> 100. If it, if it would have been further down south, yeah. you would have had your yeah, soccer. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. The problem was he moved up north. Yeah, they didn't have that. No, yeah, yeah. They, they, yeah. So, so I'm like, all right, so I, I got to play sports, right? So I'm like, football, I don't know about. Baseball, I don't know about. I know basketball. I'm like, okay, basketball, I got to throw the ball in the hoop. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm like, I, I didn't know, I never played it before, but I'm like, how hard can that be? Right. You know what I mean? So I, I tried out for the eighth grade eighth. basketball team. You know, I didn't even know that, right? You know, I tried out for the, <laughs> I yeah, I, I think, out, he, I yeah. think I remember. I yeah, think I never, and, 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 Did you make it? no, no, <laughs> no. And that was the biggest, that, that was my biggest blessing. That, that was my biggest, so I tried for the eighth grade basketball team and I never forget Crystal, you know, you know, the coach said after the scrimmage, everybody go on a bleacher, and when I call your name, you made the team. Mm. And literally, he called everybody's name except me. Literally, everybody. I don't know if you remember, there was a guy you named- You were the only one that didn't make it? No, I don't, there was a guy named Dan Candiotti. You oh, know, remember, you, remember yeah. that? you remember that? Yeah, Dan, remember Dan, that had, Dan had triple bifocals. He, didn't even, he couldn't even see the ball. Oh. Like, he made the team. Now he's bringing back stories. Yeah. <laughs> he's, bringing, he's bringing back stories. Yeah, exactly. He had big yeah, bifocals. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> He, he couldn't even see the ball, and, and he made the team, and I didn't make the team. I, I walked home crying the whole time, you know, from, from, from Sharon High School to West Hill. To I West cried Hill. home in the snow, you know, you know with, with my new Converse on. You know, I thought I would look good. I, by, by just looking good, I should have made the team. You know what I mean? And, and I went home, I cried to my mom. I said, Mom, I want to go back to my old country. I don't want to do this and all that kind of stuff. So my mom said, look, we don't have, we, don't, we can't go back to our old country. He was like, why don't you try it next year, get better. After school, walk to the, walk to the bill club, you know, practice, after work, I pick you up, and then, and then and that's what you do. So after going to the bill club for about a month of practicing baske basketball, I saw this one people that were going up the, uh, you know, up the stairs, this little weight room that they had. I'm like, what people, they, they look like Sylvester Stallone and Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'm like, I want to look like that, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So I started going there, I was, he, I was small. I was like 130 pounds soaking yep. wet. Soaking wet, I was small. And I had the worst genetics, I, I had the worst genetics. People were like, you know, you became a bodybuilding champion, you had good genetics, no. No, everything is, it did. I had small skinny arms, yeah. I had skinny chest, I had a fat belly. You know what I mean? I had a, fat, I had a belly with a small, you know, you know and, and, and I just wonder what that. So you had to work hard to get to. I, first time I worked out, I thought I was going to die. I was so sore the next day, I couldn't, walk. I, I grabbed Ben Gay, put it all over my body, and I forgot, I forgot to wash my hand, and I went to pee, you know what I mean? And I put it on my private part, you know what I mean? And, um, and uh, yeah, so, wow. so getting back, have I not got cut from the basketball team? Right. Mm -hmm. I would not fall in love with weightlifting. I would not become a gym owner so and become fat trader. So it was the it biggest blessing. It happened for a reason. Everything happens, for a, everything happens for a reason. It happens for a reason. You know, we go back in our life, everything happens for a reason. For a reason. And, and the only thing that we have in common, you know, we are where we are right now, we never quit right quit. you know we just get up and kept going you right. know you know we could have we could have we could have quit right. we could have said no we could have just said yeah. you know you know you know you know, you know you know stay in our setback yep. you know and say you know and, and complain and yep. say oh this happened to me that's happened to me yep. and we just kept going and sooner yep. or later if you just keep going for people who are listening to this if you just keep going no matter what get back up yeah. keep going yeah. It's, it's just, just matter of going. it's just matter of time for exactly. some a, a breakthrough. Just, right. That's all it is. That's all, that's all there's, it is. There's, there's, there's no secret sauce. Yeah, no. There, no. It's just keep going. Keep going. Oh my god. Well, I don't know about you. Y'all hungry? Let's go eat. Yeah, let's, let's go eat. eat. Hey guys, if you like today's episode, do me a huge favor. Go ahead and leave a comment below. Subscribe to the channel. Leave me a review and tag a few friends that you think can benefit from what we share today. Really appreciate it. God bless.